It was not that long ago that being vegetarian or vegan was to be on the fringe, even weird. Restaurant menus had no options for such oddballs. Even supermarkets had slim pickings. Fast forward 20 years and we have a brave new world, concerned about climate change, animal welfare, health and wellness, and the demand for plant-based, healthy, fresh options is booming. But how ready is the food industry? And are there responsible food manufacturers whose mission is about health rather than wealth? Stand by, Go Healthy for Good starts right Hello and welcome to Go Healthy for Good. The Chinese government has boldly recommended its citizens to reduce meat consumption by 50%. If they comply, China and its neighbours will be healthier, cleaner and greener. And if one corporation sets a goal to make a healthy difference in their country, here's what could happen. Watch. So this morning the kids have got up, they've had their wheat bix breakfast, they go straight into the water, go for a bike around, and then they run through that finish shoot to get their gold kettle. It's really cool, everyone's like buzzing and everyone's really, really happy to be here and they've all given it like 100%. It's electric. You know, the kids are just crossing the line and they are so stoked and they're just giving it their all. The best thing about today is it's a triathlon, spelled T-R-Y, so it's all about trying your best. So every kid that crosses the finish line today gets their super awesome gold medal. Um, I did a 100 metre swim, a 4 kilometre bike and a 1.5k run. It's my first time, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with myself. Really glad I did it. I'm definitely coming back next year. Participating, having fun, getting out there, being active. They either do it individually or as a team. For us, it's giving them that medal to tell them that they have given it a go and make sure that we inspire them to come back next year. Fantastic just to get that, that enthusiasm for exercise and they've achieved something pretty special today and they, they deserve it. You know, every kid can look at the medal tomorrow and go, I finished it, I've done it, I've done the whole race and I've done it all on my own, so it's fantastic. We stop off all around the country, from big cities to small cities, so hopefully we'll be able to come to an event near you. It's the Wheat Bix Triathlon in New Zealand, which we'll hear more about later in the show. We'll speak with the CEO of the company that makes Wheat Bix, make some great game food and learn how to best to wash our fruits and vegetables. So without further ado, here's the news. In the headlines today, farm to school program success, parents giving alcohol to teens increases risk and multi-sport kids to active teens. Students at schools with a farm to school program eat more fruit and veggies according to a recent study. The farm to school program was established in 2010 by the US Department of Agriculture. Farm to school means that students get access to fresh, healthy local foods to either taste or eat as school lunches, as well as getting their hands on learning related to food, health, agriculture and nutrition. Researchers have found that on average students at schools with the program ate 37% more veggies and 11% more fruit than before the program was introduced. The schools in the study mainly serve leafy greens, cucumbers, peppers or capsicum, along with strawberries and blueberries. And what's not to like about all of those? In many countries, parents are important providers of alcohol to their teenagers before they reach the legal age of purchase. Their intention may be to teach responsible drinking, but a recent study suggests it does otherwise. For the first time, Australian researchers looked at the long-term effects of parental supply of alcohol by following almost 2,000 parents and adolescents for six years. Those who received alcohol only from their parents were two and a half times more likely to binge drink or to experience an alcohol-related harm or to have symptoms of alcohol use disorder, compared to teenagers who had no alcohol supply. By late teenage years, binge drinking was reported by 25% of those given alcohol by their parents, by 62% for those obtaining alcohol from elsewhere 
and 81% if they got alcohol from both elsewhere and their parents. So if parents, if you really want to do your kids a favour, don't give them alcohol. Teens are more likely to be physically active if they sample multiple sports as children, a new study reports. Almost 800 kids ages 10 and 11 were followed at four monthly intervals for five years. Initially, they were categorized as early sports samplers, early sports specializers, or non-participants, and then later as recreational sports, performance sports, or non-participants. Early sports samplers were more likely than the other groups to become recreational participants later, and less likely to become non-participants. Early specializers were more likely to become performance participants later, but were just as likely to become non-participants later too. And non-participants, they were twice as likely to remain that way as adolescents. So encourage the young people around you to try multiple sports. It'll keep them in the game longer. I'm Dr. Narada McKibben, and that's today's health news. Over the last decade, plant-based consumers increased six-fold in America and roughly four-fold in the UK and Europe. Over the last three years in Australia, the number of new vegan food products coming to market has almost doubled. Part of that trend has been led by today's guest, Kevin Jackson, CEO of Sanitarium Health and Wellness. I asked him to comment on this global trend. It's actually really interesting to see um, the shift that's occurred over the last few years. Um, what we're seeing is a, a generation of, of um, people emerge that have come up in an environment where um, the concept of environmental responsibility is, is significant. Um, that sort of moves into um, sustainable nutrition and so looking at how do I um, keep myself healthy, how do I keep the environment healthy, and so we're seeing a, a generation emerge that is really far more interested in what goes into their bodies um, and how that impacts on the, the environment around them. And, and, and so the whole um, area of, um, of nutrition is, is exploding, I think. Interesting. That, that sense of responsibility, responsibility for the, for the planet Res and for themselves. Yeah, responsibility yeah. for the planet, responsibility for me. A responsibility for my family um, and so <clears throat> you know, a lot of people talk about this millennial generation millennials are, are, are this emerging group and, and they're very well researched online they um, are very connected online um, and so uh, they have access to a lot more information than what previous generations have had access to the forming opinions about um, what they see and what they hear and that's driving consumption behaviour and quite different consumption behaviour to what we've seen in the past. Right, because sanitarium <coughs> has been around for, what, 120 years or so? Yeah, 120 years next year. Mm. Wow, and so there's been a shift in the focus in those years, of course. Mm. And how, do, how does your, the marketplace view you now and what is your mission now? Mm. Well, well, our mission stayed the same um, right throughout that period of time, which is we're there to keep people healthy. We're there to support people on their health journey, um, to take a few steps in the right direction or to take a lot of steps in the right direction. And so we have a product range that is designed to maintain health um, and to improve health uh, overall. And, and that's been our consistent um, role and purpose right from day one. And we're quite proud of that and quite focused on, on, on you know, that is, that is our direction. And do your consumers <clears throat> trust you to do that? Absolutely. We are um, the most trusted um, health food brand uh, in both the Australian and New Zealand markets. And that's from market research? And that's from market research. That's, that's independent market research. Um, we have now for years on end... Um, won the, the annual Reader's Digest uh, most trusted uh, brands in the breakfast area. Um, we, we regularly get um, external recognition for the value of our brand. And so it's something that we feel that we're very, uh, we're stewards of. And we have a responsibility to maintain our reputation. We want to very proudly stand behind anything that we take to market and know that it's not detrimental to health, but it's maintaining health and improving health and having an overall positive impact on society.
A corporation concerned about society sounds too good to be true. Before the break, consider this. Ooh, yuck, smell that body odor and that foot odor? Yeah, I do, makes me want to go home. Oh, uh, well, we're not gonna go home. I'm gonna stick it out and get healthy here. That might not be true. Well, what do you mean? We all know that if you're gonna get healthy, you have to torture your muscles, you have to even torture your nose. You know, no pain, no gain. Mm. Well, analysis of air in gyms shows that it can be poor quality, with dust, carbon dioxide, and formaldehyde. What, carbon dioxide and formaldehyde in the gym? That's right, we're all breathing hard, so we're breathing a lot of carbon dioxide into the air. And the formaldehyde? Well, that comes from glues and solvents, you know, that they used to put down the carpet tiles, the wall tiles, the ceiling tiles, even cleaning chemicals. So how bad is it? Well, levels of formaldehyde in germs can actually exceed the safe limits for indoor air. So this air not only smells bad, but it is bad? That's right. It can even cause brain fog. Um, uh, uh, what were we talking about? Fresh air. Oh, that's right. So if I'm exercising really hard, I'm deep breathing all that junk deep into my lungs, what can I do about it? So make sure your gym is well ventilated and got good air conditioning. Open the windows, turn on the fan, or even better, exercise in the great outdoors. Doctor's orders. in the kitchen and you do not want to miss this recipe. Justin, you have got an amazing recipe for us today. Tell us about it. Oh, this is one of my favorite recipes. My wife Angela makes cauliflower hot wings and they fly off the table. <laughs> An entire head of cauliflower just gone in really? just a few minutes. It's amazing. So what, what does she put in it? Okay, so these cauliflower hot wings, one head of cauliflower, just chop it into bite-sized pieces, one cup of garbanzo flour, uh, three quarters cups of water, a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and your favorite hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Really right. easy, really so easy. This, it looks amazing. Yeah, so uh, I'll have you make the, uh, the batter, and okay. that's just the garbanzo flour, the salt, and um, garlic. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna get started on this cauliflower. <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a substance in all the brassicas called sulforaphane, which is mm. one of the most potent anti-cancer chemicals, shall we say, really? in all our foods. So, my, this is the, isn't this a fantastic cancer treatment? I mean, cancer prevention hey, treatment. Hey, if I can eat my hot wings and cure cancer at the same time, <laughs> I'm down for well, that. Well, I'm not sure that I better promise curing, <laughs> although... Although, for someone with cancer, I would really encourage them to have some kind of cruciferous vegetables every day. But no, great preventer. Great preventer. Excellent. So, yeah. And I love chickpea flour. I it's don't very know why. Versatile. Yeah, it is. It is. It's gluten free. And it's gluten free, which is really important. Right. And it's got lots of protein, which a lot, you know, a lot of flours it's, it doesn't have that. Cool. Well, that looks You're perfect. Ready. Wow. So we're Look just going you. to. Uh, Make sure that each of these are coated nice and evenly. And at home, we just use our fingers and get Well, go in for it. Oh, no, okay. but you're going to get messy, aren't you? Yeah, we're going to get messy. So yep. just coat each piece, right? Yep. And then you're going to take those out and put it on a nonstick uh, mm -hmm. baking, sheet. baking sheet. Cook that at 425 for about 15 minutes. Pull it out, it's going to look like this. Ah, here's what you prepared earlier. Yes, so uh, now we're going to bake it. Show us what we're going to do. We're going to bake it a second time after coating it in some Your favorite. some hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yeah, so just like we coated it the first time. You spent too long in Texas. I, yeah, yeah. So it's a good place to be. So from. you just put it one by one into there. Yeah, we'll just coat it just on. like we did before and then yep. back in the oven for another 15 minutes or so. So then it goes back mm. in just like that. Just like that. Bake it again. Uh, take it out and it's ready. And it looks just like this. Beautiful, crispy, delicious. And you've put it back wings. in for how long the second time? You've got 15 minutes for the batter and then what is it, 25 or so for the... Yeah, for the you, second time round. 15 to 20 minutes, just play it by ear. Okay. Um, 
So all up, it's not going to take more than 45 minutes. The game will not be finished. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's and give it a try. And what do you dip it in? I like to dip mine in a, in a hot sauce, but oh. some people like to dip it in So you'll be going dressing. back there. I'm going to try the, the sour cream. Okay, let's do it. Oh, that's mm, so good. Mm, mm. Crispy, delicious, and you're getting your cauliflower. Absolutely. You have got to try this. This is Seriously. unforgettable. Thank you, Justin. Before the break, Sanitarium CEO told us their goal is not only to improve the health of the individual who eats their products, but also of society. Here's one of the ways they're doing just that. Watch. Hi, my name is Stephanie Gilmore and I'm a professional surfer from Kingscliff in beautiful northern New South Wales. Growing up, I always loved the ocean and being outdoors and active. Bike riding, running, swimming and of course surfing. I've been lucky enough to win six world surfing titles, which I'm pretty proud of. But right now, I want to tell you about an awesome event happening near you. It's called the Wheat Bix Kids Triathlon. The Wheat Bix Kids Triathlon is a sports event held just for kids aged 7 years old to 15 years old around Australia. The Wheat Bix Kids Triathlon is set to become the biggest under 16s triathlon series on the planet. After you've finished watching this video, ask your teacher where your closest Wheat Bix Kids Triathlon event is being held. And it doesn't matter what your sporting ability is, just get out there and give it a go. A triathlon is a multi-sport event which has three different stages, a swim, a cycle and a run. The distances for the event depend on your age. The difference between a triathlon and just doing a swim, a bike ride or a run is that you have to use change props between each stage to equip yourself for that sport. So you start with your swimmers, a swimming cap and goggles on for the swim and then you have to take off your swimming cap and your goggles and put on your shoes and tie your shoelaces. Put on your helmet and ride your bike. When you finish your bike ride, you then have to put your bike in the rack and take your helmet off for the run. This can be tricky, but it's a lot of fun. Fun indeed. We're talking today with Wheat Bix's Sanitarium Health and Wellness CEO, Kevin Jackson. I asked him how decisions are made regarding food labelling that's helpful to consumers, yet goes beyond simply meeting industry standards. I think if you look at the global food industry over the last um, <clears throat> five years in particular, there's been a massive amount of pressure to um, have devices called front of pack labelling um, that really depict more about the nutrition of the product. Um, and you know, there's a lot of debate around labelling and, and health claims and what's allowed and what's not allowed. Uh, on products and, and in the past the, you, you've seen a lot of products talk about what's not in their product. And yes. so you'll, you'll no see cholesterol, no, no cholesterol, fat or whatever, you know, yes. 98% fat free. Yes. Um, so you, you get a lot of messaging about what's not in the product but there's less messaging about what is in the product and, and so rightly so I think consumers have been more vocal and are putting pressure on food companies to say we want to know more about the product and the, the inherent nutrition in the product. And so there's been debate around should that be related to recommended daily intakes? Uh, should that be some sort of traffic light system um, which categorises food you know, from, uh, from green to red? Um, and you know, there are various parts of the industry that, 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 that debate that. In the Australian context, we've worked very proactively with the industry to develop a front of pack labelling system called the Health Star rating system. And we, we sort of stole the concept from the, the energy rating system um, actually and, and adapted that <coughs> to, to food. Um, and really it's designed to um, give consumers a really simple device on the front of pack so they can look at it and instantly know 
is this a product that aligns to the health framework um, that is in place with the food standards code or not? And so it's a, it's a powerful device um, that can be a really quick indicator. And our research shows that it does impact consumer choice. And so consumers who see a higher star rating will be more positively predisposed to purchasing products because they're inherently more healthy. So that's a positive thing. So they're driving towards <coughs> the five star rating. So yeah, if you can get five stars, you know, that's, a, that, that's fantastic. And mm. consumers will choose that over a lower star product, definitely. Now, how, how do you <coughs> rate the stars? How does a product, what, what, what factors are you looking at in those products to give mm. it its star rating? Well, the, the framework for the rating is pretty complex. There's a very complex algorithm behind it all, but it really sits off the back of the Food Standards Code, which again links into the dietary, um, dietary guidelines for, for the country as a whole. So that's things like calories, mm. carbs. Yeah, so it's looking at, at content, uh, particular ingredients. It lo looks at um, whole food contents and, and intactness. It looks at... Um, contents of, of risk, risk or higher risk ingredients like your sugars and uh, fats and salts and the like. Um, and so it pulls all of those things together in an overall score um, and, a, and a matrix um, and then um, ranks that um, on different categories. And so different categories have a different approach to to that calculation overall. And that's fantastic because standing in a, in a store, you, there's no way you can kind of look at all the ingredients list and make that calculation mm. in your head. So it's great that it's being done for us. Yeah, look, I think it's interesting because you um, see so much information in the media and, um, you know, commentators have called it mess marketing because, you know, so much of that information conflicts with each other. And so this is a system to keep it simple and, and keep really clear messages that We'll cut through some of the clutter out there that is confusing consumers and what is good and what's bad. Right. Now, one of your products <coughs> I've always been intrigued by is Up and Go Breakfast, which is a liquid breakfast. Mm. Why did you develop a liquid breakfast? You're, mm. you're into, you know, whole foods and healthy foods, and there's this liquid breakfast. So mm. tell me why, why the liquid breakfast? Because yeah, I think there's some really important things to learn here. Yeah, that's a really good question, Narada. And, and if you look at the um, breakfast eating occasion, what we're seeing is a, is a shift in that occasion over time. And where, go back 30, 40 years, the family would sit down and Eat have their bowl breakfast of oatmeal. together. Yes. <laughs> um, that's no longer the case. And, and modern lifestyles, and particularly dual income families, you know, have very busy lifestyles. And so our research showed quite clearly that an increasing amount of people were actually skipping breakfast in the morning and, and going with no food intake at all um, or food intake later in the morning, which, which may not necessarily be a healthy choice. Um, and so we saw a gap in the market for a product that was, was nutritious and that was portable or, and on the go. Um, and so um, we felt that um, if we could create something that, that was inherently that inherently captured the nutrition of a bowl of cereal and, and milk together, then this could be a powerful proposition for, for consumers who would um, know that they could get guaranteed nutrition, a guaranteed good start to the day, um, but in a format that was convenient and portable. And so that was the concept, to, to make that morning occasion more accessible for those that weren't having breakfast and were skipping breakfast, but also to make it still a nutritious start for the day. Mm, and I love that you you allow the consumer to drive the market <coughs> to a certain extent as long as well as drawing them towards healthier food choices as well. So it's like a two-way mm. street. Yeah, look, I think uh, you know, you're not going to change uh, trends, consumer trends and consumer habits. And so the question you then ask is how can I, I build on that and how can I take health there? How can I make options that are suitable to fit into consumers' lifestyles, healthier or healthy options for them to choose. Enticed into healthier options sounds good to me. It usually goes the other way, right? Like this. The sin of Sodom, as recorded in Ezekiel, it was fullness of bread and abundance of idleness. Is it possible that the scriptures are actually giving us the cause and the cure for appetite control?
Have you ever felt the sting of guilt when, for example, you've sat in front of TV eating junk food? I know I have. God says in this verse that part of the problem stems from idleness, that eating sumptuously and being inactive are linked together. You see, boredom is known to be one reason given for why people overeat. Now, we may work hard at our jobs, but our jobs often are sedentary and they don't help us burn very many calories. And there's a good chance that outside of our 40 hour working week that we put our feet up a little bit more than we should. It's human nature. You know, it takes persistence to keep up an exercise schedule and to be busy, but it really pays off. So find a hobby or a passion that keeps you active, keeps your mind off food, and gives you the sense of accomplishment, which goes a long way to living your best life. Pesticides are ubiquitous in our environment. They include insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, rodenticides, and plant growth regulators. If you live in an agricultural state or country, you will be surrounded by the use of pesticides. And even if you live in the city, you can't escape because they're sprayed on parks and sports fields, along roads and around lakes to prevent vector-borne diseases and to improve the appearance of the city. The residue of pesticides can be found in a large variety of everyday foods and drinks. So what can we do to reduce exposure? While we definitely can buy organic or spray-free, that will dramatically reduce the risk. But availability is limited, so what do we do with the rest of our produce? How can we limit our exposure as much as possible? You know it's a good idea to keep an eye on the Environmental Working Group website, that's ewg.org, and they will have a list of the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, so try and stay away from the Dirty Dozen unless you can get them organically and eat more of the Clean 15 foods. We can also wash our produce to reduce the pesticide load. For example, for apples, one study showed that rinsing them for 12 to 15 minutes in a baking soda solution reduced thiabendazole, that's a fungicide, and phosmet, that's a common organophosphate insecticide. Peeling can't remove it all because the fungicide actually penetrates the skin. And so even though you peel it, you'll still be left with pesticide. But it did work for the insecticide, so that is an option to reduce the total load. The baking soda works because it disrupts the pesticide molecules. Potatoes, that's a real staple. So soaking them in vinegar cuts the pesticides by 65 to 100%. But that's a little bit expensive considering how often we eat potatoes. A salt water solution of 10% works better than vinegar and it's a lot cheaper. To make a 10% solution what you want to do is one part salt, nine parts water and mix it together. A study from China found that soaking tomatoes for 10 to 20 minutes in soapy water using dishwashing liquid was helpful and using more was more helpful. Adding vinegar to that solution helped reduce pesticides further, but adding salt made it worse. Making the water warm rather than cold was also more helpful. You could get rid of more pesticides. Now there was a Polish study looking at strawberries. They found 16 pesticide residues on the berries. And so they ran the gamut of washing in tap water, using ozonated water, ultrasonic cleaning and boiling. Now tap water was the least effective. Ozonated water could reduce pesticide load by 35 to 75%. Boiling dropped them by 43 to 93%. But who wants boiled strawberries on their breakfast? I don't. Uh, for raw berries, it was the ultrasonic cleaning that came out on top at over 90%. But I don't know how you ultrasonically clean fruit and vegetables in your own home. You'd end up cooking them, wouldn't you? Uh, in Turkey, olives were found to have about nine pesticides and these were concentrated in olive oil. But if you ate olives whole, the pesticide levels could be reduced by 35 to 65% by washing them for at least five minutes in either tap water or ozonated water. So if boiling berries is helpful, what about processing other foods? 
Well, one study looked simply at the pyrethroid residues, and they found that peeling um, produce could reduce the pyrethroids by 70 to 100%. Juicing was similar. Freezing can lower them 24 to 94%, and cooking eliminated 75 to 95% of them. Frying was not as good as other types of cooking. And remember, when we're talking about fruits and vegetables, the benefit you get from eating them far outweighs the risk from the pesticides that you might get in them. How about animal products? Well, there's not a lot you can do with meat because washing is not recommended because of bacteria. And cooking can increase pesticides in meat. For eggs, hard boiling is better than scrambling. Raisins and dried apples are delicious additions to any breakfast cereal. Not only do they add a sweet crunch, they may also reduce your risk of pancreatic cancer. According to the Adventist Health Study, individuals who ate dried fruits frequently had one-fifth the risk of pancreatic cancer than those who rarely ate them at all. Why not sprinkle some dried blueberries on your dinner zone? Or snack on dried apricots to satisfy that sweet tooth? Enjoying dried fruits often is another ageless advantage. Now it's time to answer the questions that you've sent me. Here's our first one. Alma asks, why does Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn recommend a diet with no avocados? Well, when Dr. Esselstyn developed his reversing heart disease protocol, he looked at all the evidence before him and decided that fats are just not good for blood vessels. So he advocated the avoidance of all oils along with concentrated sources of fat like avocados, nuts and seeds. Now his protocol certainly works to reverse cardiac disease and uh, his patients have very, very low uh, recurrence of cardiac events. Along with nine out of 10 of his patients staying on the program for many years. Now other protocols for reversing heart disease are less stringent, but they still advocate for less than 20% of calories from fat and most of us are getting 30 to 40%. So they really are quite similar. Here's our next question. When you're on a strong antibiotic, can you still take probiotics? Well, taking probiotics is actually best started while taking antibiotics, and then you continue them for several weeks or even months afterwards. So good plan. And our last question, what can help with degenerative joint disease? Well, joint degeneration can happen for a number of reasons. Commonly though, it's caused by overloading the joint along with inflammation. So try to maintain an ideal weight, otherwise that joint has to take a lot more weight. Be active, because if you don't use it, you will lose it. It's a common ad adage with uh, joints, but you need to use it wisely. You don't want to overload it. Eat an unprocessed diet with little sugar, salt or fat, because that will help to quell that inflammation, which can also be helped by taking turmeric. If you have a question, Send it in by either Facebook, text, email or phone. And remember, like us on Facebook and become part of the Go Healthy For Good community. Now, let's see what's down at the store. Corn is the most widely grown crop in the Americas where it originated. When fresh, it's a vegetable, but when it's dried, it's a grain. Unfortunately, most of the corn grown in the US and Canada is fed to animals, making it our number one field crop. And then it's used industrially to make things like ethanol, cosmetics, ink, glue, laundry starch, medicines, and fabrics. There are many different types of corn. Sweet corn is the traditional summertime treat with its high sugar content, and that's primarily used for human consumption. Dent corn, or field corn, is fed to livestock, and it's used for industrial purposes. Flint corn is the decorative Indian corn that comes in a range of pretty colors. And a sub-variety of flint corn is also used to make popcorn, which is what I've got here. Most of the corn in America is genetically engineered, with the exception of flint corn. Corn is high in vitamin A, antioxidants and carotenoids, especially those associated with eye health like lutein and zeaxanthin. Traditionally, corn's eaten with beans, and since the two have complementary proteins, that works really well to provide a meal complete in protein. In Central and South America, corn is often nixtamalized for better health. That involves soaking it in an alkaline solution like lime water. And then after draining, it's turned into masa flour. That process makes the B vitamins highly bioavailable and it also adds some calcium. Whichever way you enjoy your corn, bon appetit.
Earlier in the show, we saw kids competing in the Wheat Bix Triathlon. So what exactly are Wheat Bix? I asked CEO Kevin Jackson to explain. 97% of the product is actually whole wheat, um, simply from the straight from the grain, um, cooked and milled, and that's it. And then we compress it into a, a biscuit format. And so the very minimal processing. So it's um, still got the crunch and it's got <coughs> nice um, portability if you're Absolutely, it's, it's convenient and easy, yes. so you can just grab two and put them in a bowl, so it's very quick um, from, a, from a breakfast perspective. And still the, the number one ready-to-eat breakfast cereal in Australia and New How Zealand. How long has it held that position? Well, Weepix really started in the 1920s um, and ha has grown and um, developed since then and you know, continues to grow. You know, we, we have recently just launched a, um, a new variant called cholesterol lowering Weepix. And so um, these, these are particularly targeted for those people that have high LDL cholesterol. Uh, and what we've been able to show is that we can take this product uh, and uh, reduce someone's cholesterol by up to 9% in, in a four week period. Um, and That's so, better than a statin. Yeah, well, well, the good news is that if you look at the mechanism of action that is used, it, it's actually additive to a, to a statin. Um, and so you can get an incremental benefit on top of a statin as well, or you can choose to use that as your first line uh, treatment and, 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 not, go use for. A, and right. not use a statin, which is yeah. a fantastic option for, for people. You know, the, the, the active compound is a plant-based compound, uh, and so we're bringing natural products um, and making those available to consumers that have real clinical benefits for them. And what we know is the more you can reduce the LDL cholesterol, the more you're going to reduce your risk of heart events. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and prolonged so, life. And prolonged life, exactly yes, right. Yes. And, 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 what and we I know, think people would much rather have a wheat bix every day for the rest of mm, their lives than a pill every day for the rest of their lives. Because exactly. wheat bix doesn't have a side effect. Yeah, and the great news is the product actually tastes no different from the standard wheat bix. And so it's a really easy substitute for people. They have to change nothing. You know, they're going to be eating wheat bix already for a daily, you know, as a daily consumption occasion. They can still doing that, but in this case, reduce their cholesterol as well. So it's a really great alternative for people. Great. Now, you've used mm. wheat bix and the popularity of wheat bix to leverage a great tradition across Australia and New Zealand. Mm. Tell us about the wheat bix triathlon. Yeah, and so I love that you you spell it T-R-Y, the mm. triathlon, but yes, go ahead and tell us. Yeah, so the, the Wheat Bix Triathlon is an annual event that we run across Australia and New Zealand for kids. Um, and, and as you sa said, we call it uh, T-R-Y uh, instead of T-R-I. And the reason for that, it's all about encouraging kids to get out there and be more physically active. It's not a competitive event. It's an it's event that everybody gets recognised for giving it a go. Um, and so you're competing against yourself. Uh, you do get a time uh, and uh, you get a certificate and a little medal of, of participation. And we see schools come in um, with teams and, uh, and, and the like. And it's just a fantastic, fantastic event. What age group is it pitched towards? So it really starts quite, quite early from um, around seven right through to 15. Um, and we have a number of age categories. Um, that you can participate in. And how many kids <coughs> participated, say, last year? Well, last year we had over 50,000 uh, kids. 50,000? 50, 50,000 kids across Australia and New Zealand participated. And what that means is that this is the largest kids triathlon event in the world. Um, and so we're quite proud of that record. Um, but a fantastic event. And every year we see growth. Um, and, uh, and we break records, and, and it really does have a momentum of its own now. Right, and do you see, mm. do you know, or do you even track it? Do the same, say a child starts at seven years of age, do they tend to come back and, and run every year? Yeah, a absolutely, and, and what we know is that um, um, there have been um, a number of Olympic triathletes, um, both in Australia and in, and, and in New Zealand, that have got their starts and they now started their program. career. <laughs> and, uh, and every year they actually come back and uh, stand at the finish line and uh, shake, uh, shake hands and uh, you know, the kids can actually interact with the triathlon uh, stars, stars. From, wow. uh, from the country, which oh, is fantastic. That yeah. is so good. Now, you're also mm. in the protein drink market. We're talking mm. about sport and fitness. So tell us about the PB drink. 
Yeah, this is a this is a uh, drink that we've just launched recently. It's a PB Central protein blend, um, and what we've just uh, tried to do is take a, a number of proteins and and put those together in an optimal um, formulation. Um, and why do you say optimal? Because this uh, interests me. Yeah, I think um, you know there's uh, a lot of um, you know, protein overall is hot um, globally as a as, as an ingredient, um, and um, there is misinformation about protein, um, and um, you know, some organisations push push protein to the exclusion of other ingredients. And, and, and what we think is that protein is important, but it needs to be in the right balance, and it needs to be in balance in the total diet over, overall. And so what we've tried to do is create a product that recognises the role that protein plays in the overall um, diet, as opposed to just concentrate on protein to the exclusion of other nutrients. And that's why you've called it protein blend because there's, it's a balanced, absolutely more balanced yes. product. Yes. More with Kevin and the Wheat Bix Kids after the break. Stay with us. Here's more from the Wheat Bix Triathlon. Exercise is fun, but it also makes our body function better and prevents us from getting sick. Physical activity is great for your heart, your lungs, and your whole body. It uses up energy, but it also gives us energy. You can do it with your friends and be a part of the team. So what do you get when you participate in the Wheat Bix Kids Triathlon? You'll receive a Wheat Bix Triathlon official gold medal and a champion certificate. A Wheat Bix Kids Triathlon registration kit will be mailed to you full of goodies from our sponsors, an event t-shirt, plus you'll get the opportunity to meet our all-star tri-hero team, including Brett Lee, Stephanie Gilmore, hey, that's me, Tim Cahill, just to name a few. Some people prefer to train by themselves, but you don't have to train or participate on your own. Why not ask a friend to do it with you? Either way, you'll get more out of the event if you have a good training program. We have some great training and activity tips as well as information about health and nutrition. Eating well is an important part of preparing for a triathlon. Hi kids, Tim Kale here, We Big Skid. Uh, make sure you register on the triathlon program. Hi, I'm Steve Smith, the Australian cricket captain. G'day kids, it's Brett Lee here. Make sure you sign up for the We Big Kids Triathlon. Go on, give it a try. Go on, give it a try. As you train for your triathlon, we hope that you'll enjoy swimming, riding and running so much that you'll start to change your daily routines to be more active for the long term. I hope you're as excited about the triathlon as I am. It's going to be such a great day. And remember, all you need to do is have a try and be a champion. Now that's a great adage from Sanitarium Health and Wellness who have been manufacturing food for over a century. Recently, they branched out into something very different, a corporate wellness program. This might appear to be an unusual combination, you know, breakfast cereal and health food sitting alongside corporate wellness, until you hear the reason from their CEO, Kevin Jackson. Right from day one, um, we've been about community health. And so a few years ago, we challenged ourselves and we asked the question, how do we really impact more people? How do we take this message of healthy living, healthy diets, um, to the broad community and have direct interaction with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and encourage them to make, make healthy, healthy lifestyle choices. Um, and so we, we had, within our organisation, already had a really strong nutrition team um, that provides a lot of information directly to consumers um, through a free online um, service or a free phone service that Which they can uh, dial in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we um, every year we, we have thousands of contacts that, that come through that um, program. We, we offer a you know, recipe of the week service and put healthy recipes out there. We work proactively with um, health professionals. We provide a lot of nutrition fact sheets into GPs or MDs and, and, and the like. Um, and, but that and wasn't enough to achieve your goal. No, you we, we thought we could do more. Yeah, and so. We thought, well, let's create 
take some of that great information that we have and create some programs around that that we can take directly into the corporate um, area. So we started off small um, and put a, put a team around there and we've built that team out over the last few years across Australia and New Zealand. And now we go into, um, we go into about uh, 1,500 um, companies um, around Australia and New Zealand, very, very diverse. And so we go into uh, airlines, uh, we go into big banks, uh, we go into government departments, so we actually provide programs to the health department in, in, the, in the government. Uh, we go into offshore oil rigs, uh, we go into remote mining sites. Um, so all, it's not just <coughs> in the big cities, you're, not, you're not, across the we're country. We're across the, the whole country um, and, and very diverse industries um, as well. So blue collar industries and white collar industries, um, we have a very diverse team. And, and so we've got about 150 staff now um, right across Australia and New Zealand taking these programs and taking um, that, that core message of health in and educating people on, on healthy lifestyle choices. Now is CHIP, you also own CHIP, is CHIP mm. part of this health and wellness program? CHIP, CHIP forms one program in a portfolio of programs that we take in and so we, we have invested very heavily in a digital um, platform um, that really forms the core of an ecosystem that we can plug different programs and into. And that's why you can roll out to mines and to big cities all at the a same time. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we, we both do uh, online and on-site. Uh, so we've got in-person uh, activities and we'll do digital online activities as well and, and put them in a package together for a, a particular corporate. And so we're seeing significant growth happen in that um, area. There's a, a lot more interest now of, um, of corporates um, in the health of their employees, um, the relationship that health has to productivity, um, keeping uh, people present at work mentally and not just physically, um, and you know, encouraging them to, to make healthy lifestyle choices. And so um, I think if we look forward, we see significant growth occurring in that area as more and more of this millennial group come through and, and they're really demanding that organisations uh, work proactively with them and create work environments that are healthy and I think that's a positive thing. Right, because millennials are, mm. are interested in what's in it for me. Mm. So when they are assessing a workplace, they're going to say, well, that's fine, I'll, I'll give you, you mm. know, all my work hours, but what am I going to get in return? Correct. Are you going to look after me as well as I look mm. after you? Yeah. yeah, so you're absolutely right. Increasingly staff coming to work for you are going, what is the package? What is the workplace like? You know, what is your culture like as an organisation? What is your fundamental mission? You know, what are you trying to achieve? And we're seeing more and more uh, people choose organisations for who and what they are as opposed to just, is this a career step for me to, to get another job somewhere else uh, overall? And so uh, creating that right environment, having programmes to support culture, support um, workplace health, I think is going to be increasingly important moving forward. Right, so what are the components mm. of, and this program is called Vi Vitality Works, The, the organisation is called Vitality Works uh, okay. overall, um, yeah. and we, we will have a customised program for our organisation. So typically we will go into a company um, and we have our own health risk assessment uh, profiling tool called Wellbeing 360. We'll run that across the organisation uh, on an individual basis, and, and that's a private report that individuals will get. But then on a de-identified basis, we collate that and give an organisational report. And so we can then say, hey, these are your risk areas um, and here are some options for you. Here's some programs that you can use to actually reduce those risks and to target areas of particular need where, you, where you've got a particular problem. And so it's very much a, a partnership with the organisation to target the areas that are going to make the biggest difference and give, give them a great return, but also help create the environment they're trying to achieve. And so does it deal with emotional areas, uh, stress, mm -hmm. as well as your physical, the fitness piece, the nutrition piece? Yeah, right, um, right across. And so we have um, physical challenges, we have mental health um, and resilience uh, programs, uh, and we have dietary programs. Uh, and we put all of those together and we say, really take that whole person health approach. You know, how can we look at you holistically and how can we support you in a holistic way? Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's exciting to hear about a company like yours 
that's moving into the health and wellness arena with such honesty and integrity. So thank you. Mm, thanks, Meredith. I hope you enjoyed looking at food from the manufacturer's perspective rather than as a consumer and that you're following the plant-based eating movement and the trend to read nutrition labels to find out what you are eating rather than what you're not. Consider how to get your kids involved in multiple sports and instead of competing to just give it a try. And if you work for a corporation that has a health and wellness program, explore the ways that it could benefit you. That's all for me today. Thanks for joining us on Go Healthy for Good. I'll see you next time.